DNA testing aboard the space station typically requires that we collect biological samples and then return them to Earth. Well, that could soon change. A device called the Biomolecular Sequencer will demonstrate for the very first time whether DNA sequencing is possible in microgravity. I spoke with Sarah Wallace, one of the co-investigators of this experiment at Johnson Space Center, to learn how they're going to test this tiny piece of hardware and its big impact to station life. We're flying um, samples that are ready to go, so they've already been prepared in our lab on the ground. Um, and the samples contain a whole genome of a virus, a mouse, and a bacteria. And so all will be sequenced at the same time. Um, and the technology that's enabling this is a commercial off-the-shelf um, DNA sequencer called the MinION by Oxford Nanopore Technologies. And it's actually smaller than a, sm a smartphone. So I tell people it's just a little bit bigger than a fun-sized Snickers bar. And that's what's enabling this, this capability. It's got to be really exciting to the science community that yes. they're going to be able to sequence this in space. Yes. We're, I've been saying that we're um, at the, the dawn of the molecular space age. Um, we had the first uh, molecular biology experiment done, um, and that was the genes in space, mini PCR that everyone's familiar with. That was April of this year. So we're already jumping all the way to sequencing, so we're going to have this full suite of molecular capabilities aboard the ISS. And DNA sequencing um, as a microbiologist, for me, is really going to enable things like um, as, as a microbiologist, one of the things we get, we get pictures back from the crew of things that are maybe growing on the walls or came out of a water line and they say, is this biological? And that's a really hard thing to answer off just a picture. Um, so we're really excited to have this capability to be able to actually take that sample and, and do sequencing on it to see what's there. It's a capability we don't have on board right now. So in order, we have microbial requirements. Um, the crew, the astronauts are, are gonna go around and they're gonna take samples from the air, the water, and the surfaces, and they're actually gonna culture up the microorganisms that are there. Um, we can know about how many, but we have no idea what they are until we get those samples back in our lab. So with this technology, we could down the road be able to sequence those and know exactly what it is. Um, that same line of thinking, infectious disease diagnosis. We currently have no way to in, um, diagnose infectious disease on board the ISS. So again, this would give us that capability to know what it is. And right now, we're able to resupply the things that we use to clean up the environment and, and antibiotics and such for the crew. But as we move away from ISS, we won't have that capability. So I feel strongly that this is something that's very much needed before we lose our ability to resupply antibiotics and disinfectants and, and things like that. Um, kind of in another way of thinking, um, my colleague, Dr. Aaron Burton, who's also at the Johnson Space Center, he is in the astrobiology realm, and he wants to use the sequencer to look for nucleic acid-based life elsewhere in the universe. And so that's really exciting that this, this one small piece of equipment could potentially do all of this. You hope there aren't challenges, but do you think there may be? Yeah, so some of the challenges that we, is, is with the, the fluid and how the, the flow cell, which is where all the sequencing um, chemistry takes place, um, there's, there's some buffer in there. And then, of course, the sample that we're injecting is liquid. And we've seen on the ground that there may be some issues with, with the bubble um, impacting those biological proteins, um, the nanopores. And so on Earth, we, we're kind of concerned about that. But the bubble isn't really a problem because it stays to the, the top and doesn't really uh, impact the nanopores. In microgravity, we're not sure what's going to happen with the bubbles. So we're, we're really interested to see how the fluid is introduced to the flow cell, how it flows throughout, and, and what the fluid dynamics look like inside the sequencer. So this first experiment will really just look at how it works? Yes, yeah. And then there'll be follow-on. Yeah, so um, this one is just a tech demo. So we're flying up the, the mouse and the bacteria and the virus that I mentioned are all, all types that have had their genome sequenced whole lot. So we know exactly what it should look like. It won't be running ground controls at the same time. So it's really how does the ground sequencing data compare and contrast from the flight data. Um, the DNA sequencer will be splashing down to NEMO, um, which is NASA's extreme environment, um, or one of them, located off the coast of Key Largo. And it sits about 62 feet down on the bottom of the ocean. And it's called the Aquarius Habitat. 
And so while the astronauts on ISS um, are sequencing DNA, we're actually going to have the aquanauts on NEMO go through that entire sample prep. So that's the piece that's missing right now, is to be able to take a sample and go all the way through to get the DNA ready to be sequenced. And as I mentioned, we're having the DNA already ready when we fly it. So we're going to see if the aquanauts can follow our protocol that we've made to make it a spaceflight compatible protocol to go all the way from collecting a sample, DNA extraction, amplification, and then modification for sequencing and actually go all the way from sample to sequencer. So a lot's going to be happening. Um, we're very excited because a few months from now, we hope to have a lot of data to start piecing together how possible is this to put in, in the researchers' hands and enable a lot more research. A lot of researchers waiting on that. Yes.